Wrestler Weekly. Five years, five years. Happy anniversary. This is Bill Apter, and I thank you so much. I follow you guys, as you know. Uh, you bring back so much of what I did in my career, showing all the uh, classic magazine covers and stories. So happy anniversary from me, wonderful Willie, and all the Apter chatters out there. And I'll see you at Wrestler Weekly. <laughs> Wrestling fans and welcome to Wrestler Weekly Presents. I'm your host, Scotty Richardson. Joined this season, season six, with the guru, the genius, the brains of the Wrestler Weekly, <laughs> Mike Leotis. Mike, welcome to Wrestler Weekly Presents after six seasons. Well, thanks for having me. It's uh, it's awesome to be here. The passion for pro wrestling is what Wrestler Weekly is all about. And to be here with you, uh, both passionate fans, reaching other passionate fans out there, uh, is a tremendous thrill. So we're going to have a great season here. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, this is our fifth year anniversary, Mike. And I remember uh, way back in uh, 2017 when we started this journey, Wrestler Weekly, uh, fall, October of 2016. Matter of fact, on my dad's birthday, Wrestler Weekly Presents started that later that summer, 2017, but Wrestler Weekly itself, the brand, our brand, uh, started October 17, 2016. And as you have seen the post uh, a couple days ago uh, on Sunday, as we aired this here on Wednesday night, which has been our slot, mm -hmm. uh, we like to take the hour before now, AEW. Yes. And, you know, back in. When we started this, there was nothing on Wednesdays, yeah. <laughs> and then remember NXT kind of flipped in there, and and but we uh, were keeping this same time slot. But a couple days ago, we celebrated five years. Uh, also, we celebrated my dad's birthday. As you know, back in April, my dad passed away, and uh, we we were enjoyed many. Uh, post uh, with my dad in belts and my dad with mustaches. The dad with mustaches. <laughs> uh, there's a great photo that you guys have seen where he's, it looks like he's just chilling on the water there. But uh, to me, he just looks like an undercover cop in that picture. And I think it's, uh, I think it's great. So I, I always found that picture to be a great picture, but seeing the pictures of your dad over the years with the different belts and again, reading your book, which we're going to get into yep, a little bit yep. later and learning about uh, your dad's, process with your wrestling fandom yeah, absolutely. Um, it was like we all felt like we knew your dad yeah you know and uh, yeah. it's a it's a cool deal family and the family band absolutely and uh would be remiss not to mention reggie yes uh, reggie is in rhode island he is uh for those that know he's a chaplain in the navy uh, a lieutenant and so he is up in rhode, I rhode island for the next six weeks so unfortunately as we our filming season six, he was unable and uh, is unable to be with us. But uh, Reggie loves to post, and he always has uh, uh, the nice. Uh, com he's the, com the he's the, the comedian, comedian yeah, of, the, of the group, and uh, always gives in a good one liner, and and uh, he takes up for the group sometimes. He does. He does. You know, he's, uh... he will get in the mix. <laughs> he doesn't mind getting in the mix. So uh, you see some of his hashtag RR. Uh, when he chimes in, you know that it's uh, it's special, and uh, he does a lot of custom figures. So I'm sure you've seen a lot of those uh, posts through through the years. But uh, uh, Reggie and I uh, and Mike, uh, just so happy uh, that you have joined us, all of our friends and 
fans and followers here at Wrestler Weekly. And I kind of, we want to start off with season six, episode one, kind of an introduction uh, of who we are. You know, we have our core fans, um, and you know who you are, the Bobby Snacks. Uh, <laughs> you know, Bobby will post with when he's watching our show with, with the snacks. And, you know, we were able to spend time with Jay-Z Graham. Yes. And uh, how special was that, Mike? It was a, a, an excellent time. You guys see Jay-Z uh, all over Twitter, the Bojangles champ. That's right. Um, but he's so much more than that. Uh, a, a great guy. Uh, we talked some belts yesterday. We talked yeah. life. Yeah. Uh, we had a great time. And that's what Wrestler Weekly has really brought. Right. Um, is those friendships, those connections. You can mention guys like Jay-Z. You can mention guys like Tom and yeah. Zeus yeah. and uh, and so many others. LC, I yeah. mean, there's yeah. just so many people that we've gotten close with. Maddie and Reggie, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, who have been such a big part of what we do. Phil Cole's another yeah, one, you absolutely. know. Absolutely. And good old Sankey. You yeah. Know, Sankey and I are fan fest buds. <laughs> we're, we're always in line at the same time or we see each other passing. Uh, but no, and, and so many people that we could mention, certainly, uh, and that, that have reached out. Yeah. Uh, my goodness. I mean, to be a, a kid who just loved the mags and to, to be able to have a, a Bill Lapter yeah. to, uh, to do a, a two, over two minute video, um, thanking us for, uh, kind of putting his stuff back out there. But, uh, George Napolitano, I mean, so many, David Peck, I mean, yeah. so many people reached out to us, uh, with videos and just, we're just you know, just happy. Harry Burkett from the PWI yeah, yeah. Uh, chimed in, so many others. But uh, we want to talk about, you know, kind of how we started, who we are, you know, for the, a lot of new fans since we've been, uh, it's been a year since we did season five and uh, been a little bit of time since you did Wrestle Weekly Conversations. Yeah. But um, who we are, you know, we were, I'm an athletic director, uh, coach basketball, 27 years, Mike, uh, have been uh, on the sidelines. My dad, Coached for 40 years and has a gym named after him in Florida. So he was a big deal, 600 plus wins. And and so I followed in his footsteps. But I was in my office one day. This was 2016. I'd been at a school for five years and things were moving along pretty pretty smooth. The staff was was doing great. And I was using all of my John Maxwell 21 Laws of Leadership <laughs> uh, studies and uh, the law of empowerment. So they were... They were getting after it, but so, and one of the things with me and my personality is I just cannot be bored. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I will, we will try to get involved in this, I guess maybe, a, you know, eBay loves me yeah. when, I, when I'm bored because I'm on there quite a bit. But, you know, it was one of those things where I was like, you know, I'm, I'm a wrestling fan, I'm, you know, and I'll do a little marketing experiment. And so I started with uh, Wrestler of the Week. And so I'd watch the current product throughout the week. And then every Wednesday, I was releasing the wrestler of the week. And then, uh, and this was on my personal Twitter account. And so once I started getting, you know, a lot of following and people were interested in liking the tweets and retweeting. So then I'm like, you know, I'm really more of a classic wrestling fan. So on Throwback Thursday uh, on Twitter, we, I was started producing the Throwback Wrestler of the Week and a, and a nod to the classics. And so... Between just those two days, Wednesday and Thursday, I was picking up so many followers. I said, "Man, I've got to do something. We got, I've got to get a this off my personal Twitter account, which is mostly basketball related and college coaching, networking, and those kinds of things." And and so I said, "Well, let's see what I can come up with." And uh, being a marketing uh, person, you know, I have a marketing degree, and so uh, started doing some searches and Wrestler Weekly. Nobody had it. Thought it sounded good. Uh, bought up all the domains and social media accounts, and boom, here we go. So we started the journey. And the very first follower of Russell Weekly was Jay-Z Flair, now Jay-Z Graham. And so uh, that was a special moment we were able to, to meet with Jay-Z and kind of talk about those things. But in that kind of the core people uh, were Bobby Norton, who's a Jacksonville, Florida native like myself and Reggie and Tom Yervelli mm -hmm. uh, up there in your neck of the woods. Yeah. And then Mike Leotis. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were the four horsemen. <laughs> you know, Mike, Tom, Bobby, and Jay-Z were the four horsemen. Uh, or as a Yankees fan that I am, the, the core four. Yeah. Right? The core four. <laughs> um, and so, 
Started that journey fall of 2016 and started with the daily themes and Jay-Z kind of helped framework some of this and uh, then we were off to the races and then turned the, the calendar to January of 2017 and boom, we were gone. And so Mike, give us your, when you jumped in, is tell us where, how did you discover Wrestler Weekly? So, um, you know, I'd always been a big fan of the magazines and belts, but I never really had collected much. Um, when I was a kid, I remember growing up, I grew up in Staten Island, New York, and we would go to the newsstand, and it would, the newsstand had the big Optimo cigar sign, oh, yeah. and uh, it was uh, in a little town in, in Staten Island called Eltingville, and we would go, and we would load up seven, eight different magazines, and you're talking the after mags, you're talking George Napolitano's mags, yeah. um, all those things, and, and so um, always had a love for wrestling, it was always a, a good release and escape. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, and so happened to be on Twitter, um, and it just had like a rough, rough day at work, mm -hmm. um, and we, I was, I was given the Sunday shout out, you know, <laughs> um, and I was like, I had seen the page, yeah, you know, yeah. and, and had, oh yeah, you know, and, um, so when they did the Sunday shout out, I was shocked, I was like, oh my goodness, and so I took a little bit of a deeper dive, and it turns out uh, a couple of years before that, my, my wife had um, surprised me with about 300 magazines that she bought, five bucks a box wow. at a flea market, <laughs> um, all from the 80s. And that was my era, you yeah. know, that I grew up in. And, uh, and so it was just an instant connection, you know. And jumping into Wrestler Weekly, what kept me and what keeps me going to this day and what we love about all of you is is the passion we see for wrestling. Mm -hmm. That genuineness of learning about... Now, I had seen Mid-Atlantic Wrestling. I right. tape traded from the time I was younger. <laughs> but getting to see what it meant to Scotty, to Reggie, to his family, how it was a part of a family tradition, mm -hmm. um, and then sharing about my stories. I grew up in New York. It was, it was WWF. It was Hulkamania. It was right in the middle of uh, rock and wrestling and yeah. all that, but we had the NWA, so I was a big WWE, big NWA, Jim Crockett Promotions mm -hmm. guy, um, 605 every Saturday night, mm -hmm. so this brought me back to all of that, right. and what I love about is the connections that we make, right. meeting the Bobbies, the Maddies, yeah. the David Pecks, right. all these great people, the mm -hmm. Zeuses out there, mm -hmm. um, and talk, Freddie Hudson's another one, Freddie, right? Oh, Freddie. And, and Freddie lives right here in my home, my, my home city, yeah. Raleigh, North Carolina. So. And so, um, you know, you, you start talking, you start sharing, and it becomes more than about the wrestling. It becomes about the relationships. Right, right. But the wrestling, the, pa the passion for it is what builds the relationships. Yeah. Mike Parker. Mike Parker's an old Jeff Jersey Parker. guy. How about Jeff? Yeah. Jeff Cable. I mean, Dave. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Dan. There's so so many guys yeah. that we can mention uh, that, you know, I know we'll miss some people and they'll get upset, but it is what it is. Yeah. And, um, but know, we love everybody. Yeah. Even we'll, if, you, if you know, you're not That's named, fine. We'll heel know. turn. Yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> we, we, we'll pull a heel turn. You know, we, we can be the bad guys. Um, so, so, yeah. But it gives you the great bookend because myself and Reggie growing up, Flair fans, Mid-Atlantic, NWA, you know, in, in that first meeting in 1987 that I had with Ric Flair and Rose's department store, and I asked him, you know, can you, you know, can you beat Flair? I mean, can you beat Hogan? Can yeah. Because you know, you know, that's all the match. You know, yeah. Hogan Flair, versus Flair, Flair the Hogan. dream match. And, of course, you know, he, he had his sunglasses and looked over his sunglasses and then and I he didn't have to say anything. Yeah. That, that was enough of the answer. Yeah. Um, but and that was whole part of the the book. And so, you know, we're we're a little bit in and people are saying, hey, let's show some stuff. Yeah. So we can do that. Um, so this is the old rusty the rusty trusty uh, tripod that's been with in every show. Yes. Uh, this this has been in every show and um, we're not going to auction it off. Someone, no. <laughs> someone asked us that. We're not, gonna, we're not doing that. So uh, we appreciate it. And yeah. Mike and I wouldn't mind signing a couple of these. Yeah. But no, we're, we're not doing that today. Um, but I will show you Family Bacon Wrestling. This has been, you know, kind of the, the core. And the idea is, I remember a couple, this is funny, but I remember a couple years ago, someone asked, I said, you know, what is this bacon gimmick? <laughs> you know, what, what is this? Is it, is it? Do you, do you get do you get a pack of bacon when you buy the book? What is this even about? <laughs> yeah. um, and we've had some crazy questions and comments in our, our, our DMs, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> but uh, but no, it's you know when we when I when we were kids, Reggie and I were kids. You know, this is late seventies. 
uh, Southwest Virginia, Marion, Virginia. I was born in Abington, but we lived in Marion. My mom's from Chilhowie. Uh, and then in, uh, when I was in first grade, we moved to Lynchburg. And so all growing up there between, you know, birth to what, seven, eight years old there before we moved to Florida in 1981. But uh, in that late 70s uh, era time frame territory, it was Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling. And for us, you know, we had Bob Cotto in the morning with uh, David Crockett. And then at night, we had Rich Landrum, who Rich and I have become friends, which has been just awesome, and Johnny Weaver. And Johnny Weaver's the first autograph that I that I ever got as a kid, you know, and he rubbed the, rubbed my hair and when I had hair and he, he said, there you go, tiger. Never forgot it. Matter of fact, I told Johnny Weaver's daughter that story and she actually got emotional. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's what it's about. That passion that we talk about, but in the morning, Saturday morning, uh, my mom would cook. She was a tremendous, uh, still is a tremendous Southern cook. And so it was homemade breakfast, homemade biscuits, gravy, you name it, but it was about the bacon, because as you're a kid and you're you're you know, if you're not getting up for cartoons uh, and you want to try to sleep in, then you couldn't, yeah. because the bacon smell. And I cooked Mike a, a great breakfast yes. uh, this morning, so he, he got the <laughs> he, I got the bacon. He, I finally got the bacon. That's piece. right. That's right. <laughs> um, but when you smelled the bacon, you didn't need an alarm clock. It was when you smell the bacon, it's time to get up. Because not only do you need to get up, it wasn't about the cartoons. It was because all my family members, uh, uncles, aunts, cousins, they were coming over. And it was to eat breakfast, but it was to watch as a group Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling. It was a family deal, and hence the book, Family Bacon Wrestling. But um, through that journey, and, you know, my parents had favorites. My mom was Ken Patera. My dad was Blackjack Mulligan, Ox Baker, and Reggie and I were Flair and Steamboat. Uh, but but that was the, the piece that pulled us and brought us together so much so that later on we moved to Florida in 1981. We pick up now Gordon Soley uh, and, and Dusty Rhodes and Kevin Sullivan and, and all of those. Um, and because of my, my dad's and our family's religious beliefs, and my dad just simply did not agree with the Kevin Sullivan uh, devil that, gimmick, right? The army of darkness. And so between that and one magazine, yeah. <laughs> we got banned from wrestling. And we were banned for a long time. And you can read about all that and how we came back. Uh, Amazon, Family Bacon Wrestling. And, you know, you can get our T-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com. Uh, so there's a couple plugs there. Mm -hmm. But this is the mag that got us banned. And it's in my book. We talk about it. Uh, but it's Inside Wrestling, which is my favorite magazine. Inside Wrestling had the Inside Ratings on the double page uh, centerfold, March of 79. And this one is the one that got his band. And so you can see the blood. And I remember asking my dad later on, and he said, uh, you know, he just didn't want his sons to be uh, a part of this satanic culture with the blood <laughs> and the whole thing. Didn't think it was appropriate. Um, and But later on in life, my dad, uh, he joked about it. I uh, wasn't joking back then, but right. it was, he was joking later on in life. And so I thought it would be funny and somewhat sentimental to have my mom, my dad, me, and Reggie, <laughs> and Harley Race <laughs> to sign this magazine, and that's what happened. So, Mike, all that story, wh 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 where do you, wh how do you, how do you digest all that? It's so funny <laughs> because, and you take a look, and this is, the difference between wrestling then and wrestling now, people believed. Kevin Sullivan and that gimmick made people believe. Yeah. Um, these cover shots, right? The bloody cover shots, which were very, very popular um, in the 70s and yeah, 80s, yeah. were people believed this was, this was real to them. This was something they felt, something they lived for. And I'm sure that passion was flowing out of you guys as much then as it is now. Um, and so, you know, uh, you know, your dad doing his best, trying to make the best decision. But at the same time, you know, when you do have something that is stripped from you, you come back from that right. with even more of a passion. Um, and luckily, like I said, you know, your dad uh, came back around. And um, But you take a look, and this is the wrestling they grew up with. Right. 
you know, and it meant something and it still means something. And so that's the biggest takeaway that I take from this is all these years later, right? This magazine that at a time you didn't really give a second thought to, now it is, oh man, this is a piece of our history. Yeah. This is a piece of our yeah. family lineage. Yeah. And that's uh, that's an incredible thing. You know thing. what I would love to do? I, I would love to do uh, where, could you imagine seeing a magazine like this in CVS? <laughs> just on the rack, bloody cover. Yeah. yeah. I mean, as I would love to just go drop one off. Yeah. <laughs> and then video, secretly film, people as they walk by like, what is that? I mean, that just shows you how much the culture yeah. has changed. Because back then, it was all kinds of bloody covers. Yeah. It's just right there, you know, the that's grocery store. Was. For me, we got them at the grocery store. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I pushed a cart and tried to do a good deed to try to get some money for a mag, and my mom would, would oblige. But um, So that's that. And I want to I mention this. We got a card from Bobby Norton, who is really a part of our, our, our family and team. And I want to mention this. And I know he's going to be embarrassed by me doing this, but I want to do it because I think it's special. Mm. Uh, he sent me a happy birthday and, and actually... Uh, a tremendously made card here with uh, our logo and Harley Race and Ric Flair um, and a, a nice letter. Happy birthday, world champions. Mr. Dale Richardson, Scotty Richardson, and Wrestler Weekly. Thanks for the great wrestling memories and friendship, Bobby Norton. Just a tremendous guy. Yeah. I mean, Bobby was at my dad's funeral. Um, I told Mike that I'm, I was at, uh, you know, talking to people and family and friends and at the funeral, and I, I looked in the back, and I'm like, man, that guy looks familiar. And you know, you're not thinking about wrestling at that, at that moment in time, at my dad's uh, uh, funeral and at his wake. And I'm like, my goodness, that is Bobby Norton. <laughs> that is Bobby Norton. So, uh, you know, just that, but that's the friendships that we make and we have created. Um, so let's show you some, just some things that we can kind of get you going before we wrap up. But um, this is uh, Wrestling Album 8, Hulk Hogan. Uh, and these are all signed, right, Mike? All signed. Uh, a couple of these have passed away, uh, but but the guys on this list: superstar Billy Graham, Harley Race, Lex Luger, Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat, Tommy Wildfire, Rich, Magnum T.A., Hulk Hogan, Bruno San Martino, and Bob Backlund, and many more that we still can accomplish to get. But this is just a tremendous uh, piece here, and I just recently got Magnum to sign it. Um, and I've shipped this thing all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Maddie has helped me get a couple of these, and uh, my brother has sent it off to, uh, with uh, some other people to, to help us out. But uh, it's these types of pieces, these what we call the home run pieces, yeah. right, uh, that make it special. Yeah, absolutely. And when you take a look, right, and you see all these stars that you read about in the magazine, some of these guys you didn't see because it's not like today with – uh, digital media where everything is available. You can go on right now and, and watch Portland Wrestling from right. 1977 right. on your YouTube right. uh, just with a with the touch of a button. Um, but back then, you only knew your territory. Right. You knew what your TV carried. Right. You lived in New York, you got the WWF. Right. You lived in Florida, you got Florida Wrestling. You lived in Texas, depending on which part of Texas. You got World Class, or maybe you, you got Houston Wrestling or Southwest Championship Wrestling uh, if you were in San Antonio. But... You see all these stars that you read about, and, oh, man, I want to learn more about that guy. Right, right. Because those were the only resources you had, yeah. was the magazines. Yeah. Um, it's not like today, again, where everything is instant digital, Wikipedia. We know everything about everybody the second it happens. So to have that and then to grow up looking up to these wrestlers, these figures, it becomes very personal. Right. And right. when you can get their signatures on these... Uh, you know, and and really make it an immortal piece, right. something that will leave a legacy behind, um, something that will mean something. And that's the thing. None of these pieces that you see signed, none of these pieces that we show off per se are to say, hey, we have the most stuff, we have the most toys. It's not about that. No. It's about the passion. It's about the thrill of, hey, we got to meet so-and-so and tell them what they meant. Absolutely. We got them to sign this. Everything the story. Is, yep, the, the story. The story is the thing. Everything that we show you in this collection has some kind of personal value right. uh, to the three of us. Yep. And uh, and to me that's the most important right. thing. Now this next piece is one that is, is just tremendous. I I've, I've never seen any anything else out there like it. Uh, it is from Amarillo, Texas. January 13, 1977. Now I had a, a great conversation uh, with 
um, Maple Leaf, uh, another follower of yeah. ours uh, that does a lot of great things there um, with wrestling that was up in Toronto. And uh, But Barry Hatchett and I had a great conversation. Yano Kane, give him a shout out. Uh, he's on Facebook, another one of the historians. But, um, you know, when we talk about trying to track down program title changes, mm -hmm. that's a big thing. And a lot of collectors that enjoy doing that. Um, one of the things that is very difficult to find is uh, when Harley Race defeated Terry Funk, you know, in Toronto and uh, Maple Leaf Gardens. Yep. And so, uh, you know, yeah. Mike's a big Maple Leaf fan, so he likes to win. <laughs> when we mentioned that, um, I'm an Islanders fan, and yeah. hopefully we, you know, we, we keep on track. We're, we'll going, keep, we're going this we're way. Onward We've got the new arena, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but this is, uh, so Toronto did not have those types of programs that you would normally see elsewhere. Um, and so the closest now, the title change happened when, Mike? February 6, 1977. So, January 13th of 77. Uh, this is uh, Wrestling King of Sports, Support Boys Ranch, Amateur Sports, Amarillo, Texas, Sports Arena, Tri-State Fairgrounds, and check this out, Mike. Official program, 40 cents. Attend the church of your choice on Sunday. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. But Terry Funk defends the world title. Harley Race tries to regain the crown. And this is a program from that time frame. And it was January 13th on a Thursday. Terry Funk, Harley Race, other on the card, Sweet Hanson, Rip Hawk, Johnny Weaver, Ted DiBiase uh -huh. in 77. Uh -huh. Replaces Ricky Romero. Um, just a great program. But check this out, fans. Unbelievable! I've never seen anyone another one like it. No, and and there's not a ton out there for the Amarillo territory. No, um, not a lot of footage, not a lot of uh, you know programs, anything like that. So to have this piece is tremendous. Now this was the Funk family home territory, yeah. but you see names like Ted DiBiase, mm -hmm. um, who a lot of guys went to Amarillo to hone their craft, right. um, to to learn because it was a great place to learn. Dory Funk Sr. was a great man to learn from. Uh, Terry and Dory Jr. were great folks to learn from and work with. Um, you even see guys here who were local stars, guys like right. a Dennis Stamp, yep. who became yep. famous later on right. for his appearance in Beyond the Map. But Dennis Stamp could wrestle right. and was was a very good wrestler, was a big part of this territory, right. was, a, was a former Western States champion. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you see Terry Funk in their home territory, race coming to, um, to Amarillo to try to wrest the title away yep. from Terry Funk. Uh, so really, a, a one of a kind. And piece. then, and then, a, and then a couple weeks later, yeah, I in mean, Toronto, he tracked there, him there's, down. There's the title change, and so uh, a, a nice piece. And you know, we're getting those messages. Hey, you haven't posted a lot of new things to the collection. We haven't had a season in in a year, so we've got all kind of stuff for you this season, fans. Yes. I mean, tons. We've got ten episodes coming. Yes, uh, nine more, uh, and so the one thing fans love, and we've got a couple minutes left in the show is unbox unboxing, yes. package breaks, all those things. And we're going to have a lot of that. Uh, we're gonna, Mike's got a couple packages he's waiting on, mm -hmm. and so he's he's going to bust those. But I'm going to go into this one now and, uh, and see where we're at. The package break, the first package break of Season 6 here, Mike. And, again, just like you guys said, right, new items. You know, so uh, what's new to the collection and uh, hopefully you can enjoy it as much as, as much as we do. And you know what's great is sometimes I don't even know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we found a couple of items last night, Terry Funk items, that Scott didn't even realize he had. And they were great pieces. Um, so thank God we, we took a deep dive yesterday um, into the collection. But, Scotty, let's see what you have here. All right. So, and that is true. I, I, I told Mike, I said, my gosh, did you slip this in there as a gift? <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Here's the first one. Now, I know a lot of people have this, but I was able to uh, work with a few groups. And AWA champion signed... At a live signing with Rick Martell, the yes. AWA champion, uh, an, an unbelievable PWI piece, and then this one is is the one. This is uh, a special one because everyone knows how I love belt versus belt matches. Uh, 
of all kinds. It could not doesn't have to be world versus world belt. Uh, but this is the program World Champion Carnival 1985 Rick Martell versus Rick Flair AWA versus NWA. We've covered this a few different times and throughout different seasons that we've had, Mike. But to have now this program signed by Rick Martell, I mean, it, it goes really high in the collection. It's it's tremendous. And you take a look, and these Japanese covers, too. Um, I mean, take a look at the Road Warriors. Is there ever a more photogenic cover subject <laughs> than the Road Warriors? But to have Rick Martell sign this, as you guys have probably seen, Rick has been doing more signings recently. Right. Um, he's interacting with the fans. So to be able to... Uh, get Rick Martell, an underrated world champion, Absolutely. Um, on this uh, with you know uh, with all these legends here. It's it's a great start to a piece that we hope to collect more Absolutely. more signatures on. But uh, a tremendous piece from Japan. All right, and so that's going to wrap us up for episode one of season six, kind of an introduction of Wrestler Weekly. I will tell you what we have coming up next next week. Uh, we're, Mike and I are going to talk about what are we into now? Because I'll give you a hint. I'm into L.A. Hollywood wrestling, Southern California wrestling from the 70s. Yes. What are you into, Mike? I am into Portland wrestling from the 1970s. Uh, shout out to guys like Jim Valley and Matt Farmer. Um, who... And I'll shout out Rock Rims. Rock Rims, the great <laughs> Rock Rims. So we're going to talk a little bit about the stars why we're into that right now, some of the things, and educate you a little bit. And hopefully, you'll go and watch some yourself. That's the key. And so we have, again, find the book, Family Bacon Wrestling. You can find our articles on Medium, the app. Uh, also, we're on all social media outlets, YouTube. Please subscribe, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Wrestler Weekly, and ProWrestlingTees.com for our T-shirts. And so for Reggie, who's in Rhode Island uh, with the Navy, Mike Leotis, I'm your host, Scotty Richardson. Until next time, fans, so long for now.